everybody, Tony D and Little Joan. I uh, hope your um, Christmas Eve is was as full of fishes as mine was. Uh, seven fishes happened. It was delicious. Uh, props to my sister-in-law for making such a fantastic meal. Um, this is a screenwriter's rant. We're going to do some screenwriting for a change. Right, Doggy? Doggy's very tired. She had a very, very busy Christmas Eve. We'll just put the blanket over. She got a new blanket for her couch. Very comfy. Uh, lots of good presents. Um, but I got a comment uh, in my screenwriting tips. So this is a, no, this is screenwriting tips. Um, from Isa. And Isa writes, I'm pretty young, but I've always wanted to write and direct, putting that in quotes, or put a coming of age movie out there. But it, it, it also kind of is kind of hard to find a very unique and interesting storyline to write about, which I am struggling with. Can age be a problem when writing slash directing a movie? How does the whole process of finding actors and crew, etc., work? If you would like to help me out or just give me some tips and comments, please let me know. Well, sure, I'll give you some tips and comments. Um, the first thing you need <laughs> is a lot of money. Uh, if you really want to make this, you know, a big movie, if you have hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, in fact, yeah, you can make a movie. It's It requires a ton of money. Now, I'm going to move forward and assume you don't have anywhere near that kind of money. Okay? So, let's say you're doing a low-budget feature. First, uh, you're going to need a script, a completed script. That's the first thing you need. So, then you can budget the movie and figure out all the other things. So the screenplay really is your, it's your blueprint for the house and the house is the movie. So as far as write and direct a coming of age movie, but it also is kind of hard to find a unique and interesting storyline. Well, that's why it's tough to be a writer. There's a couple ways you can go about it. First, you could contact someone like me and hire them to write a unique storyline for a coming-of-age movie. Obviously, if you're very young, you might have some insight into that area uh, since you've probably recently come of age or are, or are in the process of coming of age. And what you want to do is take the experiences that are unique to you and bring them to the screen, right? So, in Superbad, the coming of age between um, uh, br 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 uh, God, I can't think of their names. Uh, Jonah and oh God, I can't believe I forgot his name. I want to say Mike, but <laughs> the other actor's name. Anyhow, the two main characters in Superbad, the, the final scenes when they're sort of coming of age, uh, is when they're kind of going their separate ways in college, right? They're going to different colleges. They're, they're probably going to have a different relationship from here on in after the events of the movie. And it's symbolized by one sort of going down the escalator and the other going in the other direction, each with a different girl, right? They both had a girl at the end, I think. Well, one of them did. So uh, that... That, that's the moment, right? That's the moment when you realize, okay, they're fr they'll always be friends, but their friendship has changed. They, they realize that things are going to be different from here on in. So that's the moment you want to build to in a coming-of-age movie. Um, it's like you're, you're, you're portraying events from when people are kids... And it's sort of the last kid adventure, if you will, that someone would have. That's why a lot of them take place senior year in high school. Uh, because after senior year, you're out of high school, you're 18, you're an adult. That's it. That's it. No more kid adventures. No, no more egging somebody's house. And, you know, I'm 54 years old. I, I guess I could go egg someone's house, but it would be weird and I'd probably be arrested, right? But if I was 14 and egg somebody's house, they might, 
you know, they probably wouldn't arrest me, or if they did, they'd probably take me home and say, this kid egged someone's house, and then the parents would be the one that would have to deal with the situation, not me, right? So that's the difference. You're, you're evolving to this place where you have responsibility now. You have to take responsibility for your own actions, whereas when you're a kid, you kind of don't. So that's the kind of transition you want to you wanna portray, you know, for, uh, what was it? Uh, that was Jesse Eisenberg in it called Adventureland about the amusement park. You know, it was sort of his last summer, right? And he hooks up with, was it Kristen Stewart was in that movie? Oh man, should have researched some of these examples before I started this video. I usually know them off the top of my head, but what are you going to do? I'm old. Uh, so, you know, um, I don't want to mention really old movies. I guess I could, like Meatballs, like one of my favorite coming-of-age movies. Um, or even Caddyshack. Caddyshack was a coming-of-age movie because Danny was about to go to college and he had to win the golf tournament. Uh, would have given him a scholarship and his girlfriend and him were getting together and it was all getting very serious. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, that's the kind of seriousness you need. It's kind of like transitioning into like crazy kid stuff to like kind of serious adult stuff. Um, so that'll be unique to your personal experience. And that's the kind of stuff you want to put in the screenplay. Um, the screenplay if you want to make a low budget screenplay, the way to do that is to sort of, before you write the screenplay, kind of take stock of what you have access to, to in terms of location, props, um, you know, uh, people, money, equipment, that kind of thing, right? So if you wanted to do a coming of age movie and you happen, you know, maybe your parents own a pizzeria, let's say, you could set the coming of age movie in the pizzeria, right? Because you have access to the pizzeria. You could say to your folks, well, we'll shoot the movie, you know, at night when the pizzeria is closed or, you know, in the early in the morning when you need the daytime stuff. You know, with um, Kevin Smith, he shot the first Clerks movie in the, um, was it like a stop and shop, something like that. He shot that. Uh, in the stop and shop that he had access to. I, I think he even worked there, or at least, very least, he knew the owners, right? And the reason Dante couldn't get the shutter open was that was so they had an excuse to keep it down and um, they could shoot inside all day long, even in the daytime shots, because otherwise there was sun sort of coming in through the window. And it didn't matter when they shot there, they could shoot there in the middle of the night and pretend it was daytime and light for day. So that's uh, some of the tricks you do. All right, so let's say you have a screenplay. Let's say, and I'm just picking stuff out of the air. You, you, you have to figure out your own low budget thing, but let's say you have access to your parents' pizzeria. So your movie's gonna center around uh, some, you know, pizza drivers who are graduating high school they're in your senior year and it's kind of their last summer together right um so you would then apply some of the coming of age stuff to that you know i assume it would be like kind of a comedy wacky a lot, a lot of wacky hijinks with the pizza drivers kind of stuff i do in uh, my comic tales of pizza right and you'd have characters who uh, you know some were be big and bold and memorable uh some would be sort of wimpy and and, and and kind of like you know not really big and uh you know the bigger characters help the smaller characters and you know you you'd craft some sort of story right and once you had that story the three acts you know the first act it's kind of like here's the situation as they were kids you know that first act is all about sort of the kid adventures and all the craziness that happens. By the end of the first act, you come to realize that this is all coming to an end. Uh, you know, people are going to go away to college or they're going to graduate or to get new jobs. And, it, you know, that's... And then there's some hurdle they need to overcome. Maybe the 
maybe the rival pizzeria is trying to drive them out of business, let's say. Something simple like that. Um, so then in the second act, you want to set up something that they could save the pizzeria, let's say. And they got to do it before they all leave and go to college or whatever, because maybe they like the owner. Maybe the, maybe the owner's a great guy, has always helped them out, but now he's in trouble and they want to help him before they all, they all leave and go their separate ways, right? So maybe there's some sort of contest. You know, a lot of times in the 80s, it was a big contest, like a, a skiing contest or a, the golf tournament in Caddyshack, right? So there's some big contest or competition or... I don't know, struggle, whatever you come up with. And that's what the second act's about, right? It's all about the struggle and things get worse, you know. Uh, uh, maybe some of the guys drop out or uh, they're going to lose and, uh, you know, everybody's ready to give up. But something happens in those final moments. Maybe it's it's the characters finally growing up and instead of doing all the wacky hijink stuff, they do something more serious. And whether or not they win isn't exactly important because a lot of times in those coming-of-age movies, it isn't necessarily them winning that makes makes the movie come together. It's about them accepting adulthood. So whether or not they win, you know, it's kind of up to you. You know, a lot of times you want people to win because, like, if you like the characters, you want them to win. But maybe they lose, but really they win because they accept the loss and... Uh, you know, maybe the pizzeria is closing, but, uh, you know, somehow they still help the guy who owned the pizzeria, maybe gets bought out and, and, and retires with a beautiful girl. And they're like, oh, well, you know, we did all this. <laughs> we did all this to help you. And yeah, it drove up the price of the pizzeria. And uh, now I can retire and, and work on, uh, I don't know, being a photographer or whatever. I'm just spitballing here. You, you got to make up your own stuff. Um, and the, and through the journey, the characters change and they, they sort of move into, they start to move into adulthood. You know, the things they did cause them to be more adult-like. All right. So now you got like a plot. Now you got to, got to figure out like the locations, right? The locations are usually the most expensive thing. So you already have the main location, which is the pizzeria, and you probably got access to the parking lot and places out back. You know, that's that's all really important. It'll be the other places that'll be tough, right? You'll have to, you know, work them out. Hopefully it'll be in people's houses, or if you got another business, another rival pizzeria, or you might have to take the pizzeria you're in redesign the inside of it a little bit and then pretend it's a different pizzeria, right? You could do that. Uh, that would be a cheap way of doing it. Now, how do you get all the people around you to make this movie? Well, the easiest way, again, is money. You can just pay people. There are people who are paid to direct and paid to act and paid to do all the things you do on a movie. But if you have no money, you kind of got to beg, borrow, and steal. So Craigslist is a place you could go and you advertise locally for local people who want to be on a crew and make a movie. You go to local film schools. There are guys who are making films or want to be in film. Um, you know, if you're going to be the director, you kind of got to know what you're doing. So, you know, learn how to direct. Uh, there are, I'm sure there's plenty of uh, tutorials online. I can't get into it. In one video, that's a it's kind of a big video. But if you know nothing about directing, and nothing about writing, well, you got a long road ahead of you. You can you can learn, um, but um, you're gonna have to promise them something, um, and you're gonna need contracts. You know, you're gonna have to have a, a basic contract, which you could also find online. Uh, you know, promising people money if the movie makes money, if you sell the movie. Ultimately, what happens at a low-budget movie, if you manage to actually pull this off, is you would sell it probably outright uh, for a couple of hundred grand to, like, Netflix or Hulu or Amazon or whoever want to buy it. But you have to understand it has to be technically good. And I mean, it has to... The sound has to be good. You, you can't just use... Any random music you find, you have to use music that you have the rights to or that's in the public domain. So you might want to make friends with a local band or a musician who could do 
the music for your movie and have some music. Um, equipment is going to be a big factor. You're going to need, obviously, a camera. Now, iPhones are great to shoot movies now. The video quality is spectacular, but what you're going to need is um, a lens uh, modification. So there are lenses you can buy that click onto your iPhone that'll give you more of a movie look. And if you know nothing about this, if you're starting at like zero, it's going to be a while before you're ready to make the movie. You're going to have to go through the process of learning all this stuff. You're going to have to do what are called test shoots. You know, just go out. Once you get a lens, a good, a decent lens, go out, start shooting stuff. Even even without the lens, just go out and shoot stuff. See, see you know, get used to shooting things. Get yourself a tripod. Um, there is what's called a steady cam, which you can build. You can build a cheap one, and what it'll do is it'll it'll hold the camera, or in this case, the phone, steady. And as you move, it'll it'll always keep it. You know, it's kind of like shock absorbers for your camera. So it'll it'll always keep it like once you lock it down in a in a good spot. So even if you move this way, like the camera, the camera will move. You know, and and compensate. And that's kind of what you want. You want nice, smooth transitions when you move the camera. You don't want it to be all jarring. You want it to be a nice, smooth, ooh, like that. And that's what the steady cam can do. Because even if I do this, you might get a pretty steady shot. But with a steady cam, it'll be it'll be nicer. Um, you might need props. The best thing you could do in terms of acting, you know, actors. Actors are tough to get. I recommend. Uh, Finding a local improv group, if it's going to be a comedy, uh, those guys are quick on their feet. Uh, they may not be the best actors in the world, but they may, they'll may they probably be good enough for a comedy. You know, you're going to have to get guys who are a little bit into acting, at least enough that they want to be in a movie. And you have to be committed to finishing the damn movie and giving these guys what they're going to want out of it is, uh, if, if you can't pay them, they're going to want clips so they can put it on their reel to use it as samples for their acting. Uh, they're going to want credit, like on the IMDb, because if you have to actually finish this movie, that'll be a real credit for them. You know, if it's a if it's a starring role, that's like a big deal for an actor. Um, they're going to want food. That's a big thing. You're going to have to feed people every time you shoot. Every time you do a shoot, feed everybody. That's the cheapest way of paying people. And people feel good when you feed them. Um... Because they at least, well, at least I got a pizza. At least I got pizza <laughs> and a drink. You know, one of the things you can do to cut the cost of that is you can cut a deal with your local pizza. You know, obviously if you uh, set it in a pizzeria and you have access to your family's pizzeria, you probably got access to free pizza. But if you don't have that, you might go to um, some of the local restaurants and businesses, assuming they're not, assuming any are still left open, and say, Listen, we'll put your business in the movie and mention you in the credits if you'll give me a few meals here and there. Uh, you know, you have to work out exactly how many meals. And one of the things you need to do when making a movie is called pre production. And what you do is you plan out every day of the, of the shoot. So. For instance, uh, the first location might be the inside of the pizzeria, right? You want to shoot all that footage all in a row, right? And get all the interiors of the pizzeria done. Now, maybe you're in an area of the country where the weather isn't like California. So what you might want to do is schedule the outside shoots uh, first on the top of your schedule. And then if it rains, you go in, you, you say okay, we're not going to shoot the outside scenes today. We're going into the pizzeria today and, and keep the schedule flexible like that. So if you get hit by bad weather, you could just transition right into shooting inside the pizzeria. Um, but you want to schedule everything because, and that's the hardest part because you're going to be dealing with people who have day jobs. They're only going to be available at certain times. You're probably going to have to shoot on the weekends. And, um, you know, you have to keep, keep things pretty flexible when you're not paying people. Um, but once you do that and you get all the footage you need, then the next thing is to do a cut of the movie, you know, and you got to have good sound. Uh, you got to have, you know, if there's music, you got to have good music. It's got to be mixed properly. Um, but you know, a lot of that 
is relatively easy to shoot now with the technology we have. You don't need to know a tremendous a lot as long as you're not trying to do a, a tremendous thing. So if you're just doing a coming of age movie that takes place in the modern day, you know, you don't have to add alien sound effects or gunshots or, you know, tires squealing or anything like that. You just really got to capture the dialogue. That's the main thing. So it should be a dialogue driven movie for the most part. Uh, stunts, stay away from them. You know, even fighting, like, you know, fighting stunts. Uh, don't don't expect much from your actors, especially if they're amateurs. It's hard to make fights look real. You know, unless it's sort of like two people grabbing each other and kind of struggling, like, ah. Like, beyond that, you know, actually throwing punches is not only tough to make real, uh, it can be a little dangerous. You know, one actor punches another, and then it's like, oh, that's it, I'm out of here. Uh, or, he, or, God forbid, he punches him hard enough to, like, bruise his face or something. Now you got to cover it up with makeup. So, um, it's tough. It's tough to shoot a movie. But um, your goal is to get 85 minutes at minimum. You want about, you know, really shoot for 90. Get 90 minutes. And uh, if you got a story from beginning to end, it's coherent. People can watch it and hear dialogue and, you know, the pacing's good and all that. I mean, you're going to have to learn how to edit too. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, finding actors and crew, like I said, Craigslist is the best. You could also hold auditions. I mean, you could just announce the auditions, you know, get a room at your local rec center or, you know, local high school or wherever. Anybody will loan you a room and do auditions and audition people. You're probably going to have to do that anyway. Worst case scenario, you, you rent a hotel room and do it. Do it there in, in one of those, you know, conference room, hotel rooms. If you, you know, you got to try not to spend money if you can help it. But, hey, if you got money and you're gonna need some money, it's gonna end up costing you at minimum a few thousand dollars. You're gonna have to pour money into this thing. You're gonna have to buy equipment and props and clothes. You're gonna have to pay, you know, uh, uh, feed people. You might have to pay some people. You may not be able to get around, you know, some people like a, a, a sound guy, let's say, you know, a really professional sound guy. He, he just might say, no, and I can't do this for free. You gotta pay me something. You gotta pay me something. So it's tough. It's tough, but I wish you luck, Isa, and I hope some of my tips, and if you check out some of my other videos, um, I think, you know, you can get some more tips, but you got a lot to learn if you're just starting at zero, so get learning it, and, um, and I think you can learn most of it online, you know, and just trying things out for yourself. I would start small, shoot little movies, you know, shoot just little short movies, edit them, get used to that. And uh, I wish you luck. If you have any more questions about screenwriting or making movies, you know where to find me.